Welcome to Storytime, brought to you by the OWS PsyCon 2019, the online book event of the year. Sir Jason was in a foul mood. He had been the obvious choice to come here. The staff at the Citadel Major were stretched so thin that there was no give. Most Knights Templar were on permanent stations around the country, and the cover at Citadel Major was being called on in unexpected ways. Half of the spare forces were currently in Birmingham, where some illegally imported Iraqi artifacts had turned up with some interesting curses and carrying some challenging demons. Another large group had been sent to a hospital where a pack of rogue girls had taken roost, and a lot of paladins were being called in for support as too many vampires were going rogue with the new drug that was sending them loopy. He had just come back from Leeds, where a ring of rogue leeches high on dragon's blood had been causing havoc, and while they were all staked and dusted, he had the fresh scars to show for it. So, after 20 years of fighting beasts of all type, he was posted to a village where the things lived openly, and apparently happily and law-abiding. Sir Jason didn't quite believe it. During his morning run, he could feel the hairs on the back of his neck bristling with a warning as he jogged past the elderly boggarts looking so harmless as they potted on the car. He had run past the werewolves and the farmers, who had been food for the local vampires for generations. He had run past the elfin who had been lounging at the manor gates. Now he was striding up to the police station, and it made a mockery of the peaceful coexistence he had been hearing so much about. Most police stations had robust window and door security, but how many had silver wire wrapped around the grills? And how many had rowan wood fittings on the door? How many police stations had horseshoes hung over every door and window? Even the garden the chimney was spiked with silver and red cotton. The police station door was open, catching the cooler morning air. Sir Jason shook his head and strode in. He would not have been surprised if he had walked into the scene of a bloody ambush. Instead, he walked into a dusty outer office with the usual crime prevention notices hanging limply around and the sound of Steve Johnson making a pot of tea. Good morning, Sir Jason leaned over the counter to catch Steve's eye. Come on through, Sir Jason. Everyone's here, Steve started loading up the tray. You've got the combination. Just come through to the meeting room. Sir Jason automatically looked around, covered the pad with his free hand and entered the number quickly. He looked around again before slipping quickly through the door and testing that it was fully shut. He was used to those habits keeping him alive. He took a deep breath. It was different here, he repeated to himself. And even outside in the rest of the world, it was only the rogues that were dangerous. Lots of safe boggarts and vampires, and worse, kept their heads down and got on with things, just like humans. So Jason didn't feel convinced, not in his bones. The meeting room was a bit dustier than usual. Steve put the tray down on a scarred table. Sorry it's a bit cluttered in here. Miss Tuesday hasn't been able to come in. She's busy with the wedding. Miss Tuesday is a boggart, Sir Jason said flatly. She does a good job. She's reliable, and she likes the pin money, Steve shrugged. You're letting a beast into the police station in this environment? Sir Jason stared at Steve. We don't use the B word these days. Mike started putting the mugs in front of everyone. We don't use racist words. We don't use pejorative religious descriptions. We don't use words that are negative for people who have special needs. We do not call boggarts anything but boggart or non-normal. And one damn good reason is that it leads to sloppy thinking. You may see Miss Tuesday as a boggart, but just calling her beast means that you stop thinking clearly about her. I've seen her war record. She did good service for us at Stalingrad, when the normals could barely survive. She's been clean all her life, and her son is on detached duty in Colombia. And you know what that means. People sitting around this table can clearly rely on her, and the Apucks and the pack at the Red Lion and all the other non-normals to back us up in a tight spot, and at the moment, that is really helpful. Lecture over. You don't take sugar, do you? So Jason held up his hands reluctantly to the younger man. Sorry, it's a bit different from my normal beat. That's okay. Mac handed him his mug of tea. And between you and me, Miss Tuesday is a sharp-tongued, evil-minded old battle-axe that can embarrass any male within 40 yards. Apart from that, she's harmless and a good cleaner. Steve casually tipped a couple of packets of biscuits onto a plate and put it in the centre of the table moving the tray to one side, and then he sat down himself. She ran the Sunday school for years, he said, helping himself to a custard cream, and all the kids taught by her are still really polite to their mothers. Anyway, Sir Jason, this is Reverend Darren King, our local vicar and exorcist. He's just come back from Birmingham where he has been helping your lot. Darren, this is Sir Jason Keyes from the Knights Templar. He's here just in case something goes wrong. Pleased to meet you, Sir Jason leant over the table and shook Darren's hand. I've heard good things about your work. Darren nodded. I've heard a lot about you, Sir Jason. You handled that bad case in Norwich. Have things settled down there? They managed to identify the new paladin, and things are pretty much stable there, Sir Jason said. But it was touch and go for a bit. Let's hope nothing like that happens here. Sir Jason, Mike and me have been here all week, but we haven't really met up like this. And Darren, you'll need a bit of a briefing. I'll just go over the situation, and then we can all take it from there. All okay with that? 
Steve looked around at the others, took a mouthful of tea, and then stood next to a large wall-mounted whiteboard. He'd written a summary on one side of the board and picked up a marker ready to update it. Rob Eldon made an application to excavate. He got permission from Lance Davies, who would allow anything for a few quid. He got permission from English Heritage, and after a bit of digging he found some nice bits and called in the TV people. Digging up the past is a Sunday evening regular. Millions watch it and are wandering about the village with their cameras and all their electrical recording equipment, past all the non-normals staying at the red line that is run by a pack of werewolves. Steve took another mouthful of tea. Why on earth did Lord Lothar allow it? Darren asked. He's been in charge around here for nearly 800 years. He has never allowed intruders in. Apparently, Lord Lothar may be in charge of this domain. He may be the Lord of the Manor and an immortal elfin. He may roam with an iron rod, but he is technically not Lance Davies' landlord. The cathedral in Chester is. They were given the land back at the time of Hugh Lupus in the 11th century, before Lord Lothar settled here, when they were an abbey. Uh, Lord Lothar vaguely remembered monks on the place back when he had just taken over, but after the Black Death, they just rented it out for the next six and a half centuries. As long as the farmer is respectful and pays feudal dues to Lothar, he just doesn't care. You know how this place can drop off the radar? Steve sighed. Every time I try and book annual leave, I end up having to explain this place to a different paper shuffler at the home office. We are just forgotten. Darren tapped the table in front of him. So, we have a television crew wandering around. Well, it could be worse. Or the Boggarts usually wear a glamour and they won't rock the boat. Tier Armstrong at the Red Lion won't tolerate any of his pack stepping out of line. So, that's okay. Mr. Beddoes is far too busy to even think about doing a fang face to camera. We should be fine. Who's Mr. Beddoes? Sir Jason asked cautiously. Local solicitor and vampire, Mike said, helping himself to another biscuit. He's been the solicitor here for about 300 years. He's really conscious about appearances and his standing at the Law Society. His secretary, Mrs. Jones, is a vampire as well, but she is usually really het up about the filing, or whether Mr. Beddoes has his favourite biscuits. They're pretty harmless unless they arc against you in a courtroom. Sir Jason felt doubtful, but shrugged. What's in this field anyway, he asked. That's the thing, Steve frowned. There was never likely to be that much up there anyway. At least, nothing we needed to worry about. All the stuff that Rob Eldon dug up was Roman. At that time, this was just the same as the rest of the country. Lord Lothar took over here at the end of the 12th century, I think. Steve looked at Darren, who shrugged. It's been a bit hard to pin down, and as it wasn't exactly a legal takeover, his lordship gets a bit vague. Steve took a mouthful of biscuits. Well, this place didn't become a sanctuary for non-normals until after the Black Death. It was a bit after, Darren said, dunking his biscuit into his tea. I've been trying to read up on the records, and that's roughly when Armstrong clan first moved in, as farmers and blacksmiths. It's a bit vague, though, as you would expect. But probably 1375, the monks abandoned direct farming on what is now Low Grange Farm, and started to rent it out. 1375, then, Steve shrugged. What I am trying to say is that there are ancient bodies being dug up all over the country with stakes through them, or stones in their mouths, or heads cut off. They are evacuating houses with cats buried under the threshold, and severed hands found in the eaves. All over the country, archaeologists are digging up stuff, and it is all okay. They talk about superstition and folk memory, and write a book about it. It doesn't impact us, and there has been nothing hidden here. If you have to hide you are a witch, then you might bury things in a field. Here, they are just left on the mantelpiece. This story time was read by Timothy Bateson, and brought to you in conjunction with the OWS Psycon 2019. OWS Psycon runs from May 17th through May 19th. You can find us at owspsycon.ourrightside.com. Again, owspsycon.ourrightside.com. We have events happening across all genres. If you are a reader, you cannot afford to miss this event. You never know. You may just find your next best read.